Payday 2 is a game so chock full of weapons that it can get a bit overwhelming at times. And with just so many of them in the game, it's only natural that some people are going to gravitate towards certain choices and away from others. Now when it comes to death sentence, you'll often see people label certain weapons as unviable, irrelevant, or just straight up bad. And while that certainly can be the case, these are often labels directed at weapons like the AMCAR, post DRF shotguns, or maybe the HRL-7. And while these weapons are certainly not your top picks in most cases, they're by no means bad. And I find that there's a growing number of people in the community that are becoming aware of that. But no, today I'm going to be covering a weapon class that truly does deserve the label of bad. A weapon class that primarily sees use in stealth, occasionally can provide some anti-dozer utility, and comes with some of the absolute worst crowd control that you will find in the whole game. Not only have these weapons seen no buffs since one down released, but they've actually been one of the few weapons to see exclusively nerfs. Despite all of that, this weapon class once dominated the one down difficulty, despite never even being able to shoot bullets. Now at this point, you're probably aware that the weapon class that I'm going to be covering today is that of bows. Now as weapons, these bows can certainly leave a lot to be desired. Most of them have awful fire rates, they have cumbersome reloads, no multi-killing ability, and they really make you feel helpless against the never-ending swarm of cops. When you add on the necessity to hit enemies with a moving projectile, add on a myriad of possible arrow arcs, you end up with one hell of a unique weapon, even if it's statistically lacking a little bit. Although, I will say it's not all bad. Bows actually do sometimes come with a few benefits over conventional weapons. They require a pretty low skill point investment, they often come with good to amazing concealment, and theoretically they can have some of the best ammo economy in the whole game. Sort of. When it comes to skills, certain bows can function to their best ability with absolutely no skills whatsoever, while others might benefit a bit from bringing out their surefire ace or some form of crit. While others might rely on Zerk or Body Expertise to reach their full potential. Now you might notice that I said Zerk or Body Expertise, and that's for a good reason. Actually trying to figure out what skills are going to work on what bows can be a little bit of a maze to navigate. In general, all bows are going to be part of one of two groups. There are the manual bows that you're going to need to charge, and then there are the crossbows that are going to fire instantly. For the most part, it makes a good amount of sense which bow falls into which group. The important thing here is just to keep in mind that these two groups do exist, and they are functionally different from each other. For the most part, the game is going to treat the manual bows as automatic weapons, while it's not going to treat the crossbows that way. So this means that skills like body expertise or lock and load are actually going to work on the manual bows, but they're not going to be working on the crossbows. The only strange skill here is Zerk. Zerk, for some reason, just does not work on the manual bows, despite working on the crossbows. I personally can't explain why this is. Um, you know, maybe the arrows from the manual bows are considered throwables, maybe they're considered rocket launchers. Uh, maybe this was from a balance decision back before we had things like Graze, Gas, Kimbo SMGs, Current Hacker, etc. However, I can't be certain of any of these. There are a few less important skills that I just want to quickly brush over. Parkour Ace, while normally sort of a detriment on most builds, can actually help out bows a lot. Considering most bows can only hold one shot at a time, there's not really a reason that you're ever going to want to reload cancel them. Now on the topic of only holding one shot, another skill that's going to be pretty helpful here is Shockproof. Trying to hit a taser with the single shot that you get on a bow can be sometimes next to impossible. In the time it takes you to shoot that single arrow, I sometimes won't even be able to find where the taser is that's stunning me, let alone trying to aim a shot on him. Now another skill that you might neglect is going to be Rifleman. Normally this skill is skipped most of the time, but on manual bows it can actually be a pretty big help. Rifleman will drastically increase your movement speed while charging arrows. While this isn't always needed, and doesn't help as much on bows like the Plains Rider, it can be a really nice skill for the super low point cost. 
Last up, I just want to address Bloodthirst Aced, but more generally the idea of reload skills and crossbows. Crossbows are going to have fire rates that line up perfectly with their base reload time. So this means that even if you speed up the reload, you won't actually be able to fire the weapon any faster. Now if you're someone who's played with Bulletstorm on weapons like the HRL, or you've tried out the new Iran Sniper with aggressive reload, then you know exactly what I'm talking about and just why it's so annoying. Now if I had to go ahead and rank the bows based on how well they perform in the game, I would probably put them in an order somewhat like this. Up first, the Plains Rider is a significantly better weapon than almost anyone gives it credit for. It has a fairly high fire rate and low reload speed, making it by far the fastest shooting bow. On top of that, it's able to kill most cops in one shot with the right arrow types, making this a pretty solid weapon on its own. Now the Airbow trades off a little bit of that close quarters combat from the Plains Rider for being a tad bit better at range. And while your maximum fire rate is going to be a little bit lower, and you can't really do as much damage in close quarters, you do get a slightly better fire rate at longer ranges. On top of that, the Airbow is just a lot easier to use when compared to the Plains Rider, as you aren't going to have to manage handling different arrow arcs, different charge times, keeping up with the charge time, or anything like that. Also, having a magazine on this with a few shots you can fire in pretty quick succession makes it just a little bit more new player friendly. The pistol crossbow, on the other hand, is a pretty stellar utility pick. Even on its own with the right ammo types, you can do a good bit of damage, but generally this weapon will excel in a utility role. Coming in with the highest fire rate of any crossbow, there's definitely a reason to bring this weapon. The light crossbow is actually better than the pistol crossbow in every way, but two. It has a slightly slower fire rate, but more importantly, it occupies the primary weapon slot. While it can still be a solid utility weapon, the weapons that it's going to be supporting just aren't nearly as good as the pistol crossbow. Now the heavy crossbow is the first weapon on this list that truly kind of sucks as a main weapon. Without HE arrows, you're looking at close to 3 seconds per kill. And you heard that right, not 3 kills per second, no, 3 seconds per kill. The only redeeming feature of this weapon is its ability to kill dozers. While nothing close to what it used to be, you can still take out a full health minigun dozer in a single shot, albeit with a little bit of a costly and unreliable setup. Now the Decca and the English Longbow, on the other hand, have no such luxury. They're worse at killing hordes than the Light Crossbow, they come with all the downside of manual bows, and they lack the dozer utility that comes with the Heavy Crossbow. While they are a bit better at killing normal units than the Heavy Cross, their inability to use Zerk or Overkill makes them much worse at tackling dozers. In theory, you could rate these weapons higher than the Heavy Crossbow, but considering how awful all three of these are, I would argue that the Heavy's niche anti-dozer utility just bumps it up a little bit on the list. Now with the ranking out of the way, it's time to jump into some builds. Up first, we have a classic build. I bet many of you are already pretty familiar with this. For anyone who hasn't seen this before, builds like this used to dominate Death Sentence back when it was still called One Down. Due to most weapons being much worse back then, coupled with a general lack of ability for people to make any decent builds themselves, an unreasonably high amount of people would flock to builds like these. I should note, I did make a few personal changes that weren't really as often seen in 2016, but I do believe that they improved the build while still keeping it true to its roots. Most builds back then would actually take Inspire instead of the skills that I have, but I found that with Rogue's Insane Dodge combined with all of the Revenant that you could ever ask for, reviving your teammates isn't a huge problem without it. Unseen Strike and crits in general weren't taken as much, but I find that one-shotting heavies with the China Puff and one-shotting plateless dozers is a lot more valuable than Inspire. I should say that this build is by no means the best bow build. Despite being popular, I wouldn't even say that it's in the top 5 best bow builds. 
However, I will go out on a limb and say that this is the bow build that the most amount of people have used at some point in their payday career. The general idea is to use the puff to clear out rooms of enemies, with the crossbow helping for dozers, regening ammo, and killing any singular enemies you find. I generally like to use doctor bag charges every time I use messiah, even if I don't need to reset my downs. It feels a little bit weird initially, but it makes a bit more sense the more that you do it. While this build can struggle a little bit when it comes to killing enemies, it's certainly still fun to play. On top of that, the revenant that you have makes you able to tank almost any situation, so your lack of killing is less of a big issue. While this build is certainly more suited to the old days of one down with lower spawns, less specials, and the ability to use body expertise on crossbows, it's still a blast to play in 2023. Now let me take a quick second to go over the different ammo types for this weapon. Bringing default arrows is usually done when you need the crossbow to be able to kill dozers. And if you want to maximize this crossbow's ability, you're going to want to get Zerk, get Crits, and get high value target aced. Surefire is another skill that will definitely help a lot, however keep in mind that this weapon won't be able to one shot heavies without some Zerk. That said, if you just have frenzy level Zerk, it's more than enough. And if you were to use other arrow types on the light crossbow, I'd recommend giving the HE arrows a shot. They'll be able to one shot lights and shields, as well as every non dozer unit if you land a crit. At 30 concealment, this makes for a pretty decent grenade launcher replacement, assuming your build has some way to keep up with the ammo. Now with the arrows out of the way, I want to take a quick break to talk about the Revenant tree in general. In my opinion, this has to be one of the most misunderstood and misused skill trees in the whole game. While most people will say that taking these skills makes you a bad player, or makes you bad at making builds, it isn't always the case. While that does hold up most of the time, there are cases where Revenant is perfectly fine to throw on a build. If you have an excess of points, and damage and survival isn't a huge issue for you, absolutely give Revenant a try, especially if you're running a dodge build. Now, when it comes to playing with these skills, there's certainly a little bit of a learning curve. Now, I'm still pretty new to the Rev playstyle myself, as I kind of avoided these skills for a long time, but I do have a few tips that I can give you. First off, do not underestimate the ability that you get from Swan Song. For one, it can help you rebuild ammo. You can get off a good amount of China Puff shots before the timer's up on this build, or you can collect a ton of ammo boxes that normally you would down getting. But the biggest part of Swan Song, in my opinion, has to be the ability to position yourself after you would normally down. If you happen to have a team that struggles to manually revive you, this can be a huge help. On top of that, you're able to position yourself for better kills to proc Messiah if you need to. Now the final benefit of Swan Song is being able to do interactions way longer than you should. Combine that with Rogue's insane dodge and you're able to revive, repair drills, or do anything in the middle of swarms of cops with almost no problems. While I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a good or a smart way to play, it's definitely a way that you can play a good amount of the time. Swan Song is of course not all that you get with Rev. The other big help comes from the self-revive ability. Juggling Messiah, Feign Death, and being revived by your teammates can be a little bit strange to get used to. Now keep in mind that you have 8 refills of Messiah from at least your own doctor bags, let alone any assets or any that your teammates bring. Due to this, you can use Messiah pretty liberally. But something to keep in mind is that you can only use Messiah while you're downed but haven't been fully knocked down. Now when you first down, enemies generally won't shoot you until you shoot them first, and this gives you a little bit of a window to wait out feign death and line up that messiah kill. Up next is what I would actually consider to be the best bow build. The Poison Plains Rider is generally considered to be the best primary bow weapon, 
And while Burglar isn't usually the first pick for perk decks, I already used Rogue in the previous builds, and I wanted to switch things up a bit. If you want, you can run this with Rogue, Hacker, Copycat Dodge, Xprez, anything that you really want, and it'll still be a really good build. However, Burglar is by no means a bad deck, and it holds up just fine here. If you've never played Burglar before, this might not be the build that gets you into it, but if you're already a Burglar Chad, then definitely give this one a shot. Now when it comes to the Plains Rider, I have to say it is by far one of the weirdest weapons. It's no secret that bows in general aren't really a good weapon class. Most people never touch them simply because the weapon stats just aren't there for them. However, I think it's unfair to label the Plains Rider as bad. While initially it feels a little bit weird to use, and you might imagine that it's actually in line with the other bows in the game, but I would go as far as to say that the Plains Rider is a good weapon. Now maybe not good in the sense of akimbo SMGs, or gas, or snipers, or ARs, or most other weapons in the game. However, I do believe it's a good weapon in the sense of what the game asks of you. The fire rate in general is pretty high once you get used to it, and it basically one-shots most non-dozer units. Of all the bows, this is the one that certainly surprised me the most. I was definitely aware that it was better than the others, but I really had no idea by how much. If there's one weapon I would encourage you to use for this video, it is definitely the Plains Rider. However, if you have any intention of using the other bows, then I would go ahead and save this one for last. It's just so ahead of the pack that using any other bow starts to feel cumbersome and just terrible. Now you may be shocked to hear that the Plains Rider has a theoretical maximum kills per minute at around 113. To achieve this though, you're going to need to have a pretty good handle on maximizing the fire rate. This is where the actual mechanics of manual bows and bow charging start to come into play. All manual bows need to have their arrows charge for a specific amount of time before they're able to actually deal any damage to enemies. If you simply fire your arrow right away, it'll result in a misfire, which allows your arrow to just bounce off the cops. To be able to actually deal damage, you're going to need to charge your bow to at least one-fifth of its maximum charge time. Now that might sound a little bit complicated, but what it means for the Plains Rider is that you have to charge your bow for about a fifth of a second, or around 200 milliseconds before shooting your arrows. While this is by no means a long time to wait, it definitely takes a little bit of practice to fire the arrow at around this time. Now you may be inclined to charge your bow just a little bit longer than that, but with the poison arrows there's often no reason to do so. While the actual damage of the arrow will scale with the charge, Poison Arrows will be able to one-shot all units besides Cloakers and Dozers with the shortest possible charge to begin with, as the actual damage of the arrow is almost nothing when you equip Poison. The main reason you would want to charge an arrow for longer comes down to the arrow arcs. The arc of your arrow is going to be related to the length of your charge, so if you need to hit a sniper or some other faraway enemy, you're going to want to charge your bow for probably a little bit longer. So what about the different arrow types for this bow? You know, say you don't want to use poison, what are your other options? Considering poison works with no additional skills, it's really hard to find a reason to use anything else. However, there are of course other options, and they do hold up somewhat well. Normal arrows will let you deal with dozers in a way that poison arrows just don't, but you'll want to bring body expertise to keep up with the damage. While you can still kill heavies with almost no charge, you're going to need to charge your shots for a little bit for medics and tasers, and a lot for the marshals. The upside, of course, is that cops are going to die right away, and you aren't going to have to deal with the delay of poison. You also get the added benefit of being able to deal with dozers, if a little bit slowly. Now as for the HE arrows, they actually have a pretty good use here. While the Plains Rider is definitely more awkward to deal with than the crossbow, it's kind of a straight upgrade when it comes to the HE arrows. You can shoot fully charged shots faster than the light crossbow, and you're able to do just a little bit more damage. Now of course there's the trade-offs of using a manual bow versus a crossbow, but I'll leave this one up to you to decide which one to bring.
Now the air bow is the second and the last of the bows that I would actually label as solid weapons. You can kill a decent amount of cops with it, and generally you won't feel too underpowered. It sits in a nice place near the planes rider, just not quite as good. On the upside, I would say this thing is probably the most approachable bow for someone who's never used any bows before. When talking about the planes rider, I mentioned that there are two things you have to get accustomed to, being handling the fire rate, and then handling the arrow arcs. But when it comes to the air bow, the only thing you need to handle is dealing with the projectiles. On top of that, having a magazine that can fire pretty quick in succession makes it a little bit more like a traditional weapon. Now you might be wondering why I have the Rust 12 as my secondary, instead of a 5.7, you know, a grenade launcher, an SMG, rocket launcher, or probably any other weapon in the game at this point. But there's really two main reasons. First of all, this build does desperately need an anti-shield weapon. So far, I've tried to only shill for the bows, but the truth is they have some downsides. One of their biggest flaws is their ability, or should I say inability, to deal with shields. There's an argument to be made that bows without explosive arrows have some of the least going for them when it comes to killing shields. They're weapons with some of the slowest fire rates in the game, they have no ability to pierce anything, unironically flanking the shield is your best bet half of the time. So why did I bring the Rust 12 specifically? It might seem like an odd choice. The Rust 12 is definitely a strange weapon overall, especially as it seems like it was added to compete with the 5.7. But if that's true, then they missed the mark by about a mile. Despite having a higher damage stat, the lower mag size makes it just a lot less useful overall. Although, all of that said, the Rust 12 was recently buffed, so I figured I should give it another try. Speaking of the buff, let's take a quick look at it. The total ammo was buffed, the ammo pickup was nerfed, and that's it. Well, I'll say this does about nothing for this weapon, and definitely does not make it much better. Finally, it might seem a little bit weird to bring ammo bags with bows, considering that they kind of have infinite ammo. And while theoretically that's true, in practice you can pretty easily run out, especially on the air bow. Being able to replenish your ammo lets you shoot at enemies you normally wouldn't want to waste your arrows on. And on top of that, Bulletstorm will roughly double your rate of fire, which in turn almost doubles your DPS. While this is by no means an insane game-changing feature, it certainly helps sometimes. You also gain the ability to absolutely cover the map with arrows that you aren't able to pick up, completely ruining the visual experience for anyone using vanilla throwable contours. With the planes rider and the air bow out of the way, it's time to get back to the really bad weapons. And the heavy crossbow certainly is one of those. For killing anything besides a dozer, the heavy crossbow is basically just the light crossbow for anyone who felt like the light crossbow reloaded just a little bit too fast. So why use the heavy crossbow? Well, stat-wise, there's not a huge argument for it. However, as a weapon, it can feel pretty good you can one-shot every enemy to the body if you have Zerk. You can even one-shot Dozers if you crit with Zerk and have high-value target. On this build with ammo bags and Anarchist, it still feels reasonably lazy, even with the slow fire rate of the crossbow. You don't need to pick up arrows at all, and Anarchist lets you do a lot of things that you wouldn't be able to get away with with other decks. Originally, I was going to use this build to demonstrate the buffs to fully loaded aced, as well as go over some unintended behavior of bows picking up ammo boxes. However, that got patched out in update 235, so I guess instead I'll give a few more ways of using the heavy crossbow in more optimal use cases. And while I do think that running this bow as a main weapon is fun, it definitely benefits a lot more from being brought as an anti-dozer utility. You can put it on pretty much any build that wants to use a secondary weapon for most of the heist. It especially benefits builds that struggle to kill dozers, so weapons such as secondary snipers, shotguns, or even a flamethrower might want this as a backup, 
While it might struggle when compared to akimbo trigger-happy pistols, DMRs, or any melee buff, the lack of skills required, the insane concealment, as well as a super high ammo capacity makes this weapon a little bit unique. Moving on to the pistol crossbow, we find a slightly different weapon. As the only secondary bow, it's technically the only weapon of its type in the game. Because it's a secondary and still lets you bring your primary weapon, the pistol crossbow actually does see a fair bit of use on specific builds. On Anarchist, with HE arrows, you can use it to get some pretty good zerks. With poison arrows, you get a weapon that can deal with almost every enemy in the game, comes with theoretically unlimited ammo, and actually has the highest fire rate of any crossbow. In reality though, the total ammo is the lowest of any crossbow, and the fire rate is just barely better than the light, so it doesn't really win out too much. It definitely lacks the uniqueness and the power of the Plains Rider, while not really embracing the high damage values that give the other crossbows their niche. All that said, if you want to give this weapon a shot, I would recommend swapping out maybe a 5.7 or a GL on a different build. While you might need a source of ammo on certain heists, it doesn't consume it too fast, especially if you use it sparingly. In all, I would say that these two crossbows aren't necessarily awful weapons. They each have solid niches that they fit into, and they do well in these roles. At least, they do as well as they can. That said, trying to bring either of these as your primary weapon is certainly going to be gimping yourself in one way or another. And while they'll make a reasonable loadout, they won't really be able to carry you through any heists. all the other bows out of the way, it's time to talk about the Decca and the English Longbow. Both of these weapons are real contenders for the absolute worst weapon in the game. While they do technically shoot a bit faster than the heavy crossbow, that's only if you don't need to charge your arrows at all. On top of that, they lack the ability to use Zerk for any dozer breakpoints. If that wasn't bad enough, simply trying to judge where the English bow is going to shoot is probably the single hardest task in all of Payday. There is however one single redeeming quality when it comes to these weapons. Both of them are pretty close to the Plains Rider when it comes to actual rate of fire. That is if you discount their awful reload. They also do twice the amount of damage of the Plains Rider, meaning if we pair them with Bulletstorm to skip that terrible reload, you end up with a weapon that has one of the highest damage outputs of any bow build in the game. The 5.7 on this build actually comes with another benefit, besides the normal AP utility. The 5.7 is able to dump all of its ammo in a little under 5 seconds if you try hard enough. Normally this would be a detriment, but in a build like this it actually allows you to use your bullet storm even more often. So while using this build to its fullest potential will drain your ammo bags pretty quickly, you're definitely able to still survive without them. After all, you're still using Sneaky Bastard Hacker. Now you might wonder why I have body expertise on this build, considering the Decca and the English Bow both do 2000 damage. Now in theory that should be enough to one-shot almost any unit, but it's not quite the case. This is where the final mechanic of bows come into play, and that's going to be the charging. When using normal bows, bow damage will scale based on how long you've been charging your shot. This means to do the full damage of your bow, you need to charge it all the way. As this tier of bow has a damage stat of 2000, I would need to charge it most of the way to kill tasers and medics, and about halfway to just kill heavies. Unlike the Plains Rider, these two bows share a full charge time of 1.5 seconds instead of that normal 1 second meaning that you're going to be charging them for even longer to get those kills. And that rounds out every bow in the whole game. This is by no means an exhaustive list of builds, as there's so much more you can do. If you're someone who actually wants to give bows a shot, 
I'd recommend experimenting with different ammo types, different bow combinations, and definitely different perk decks. Most bows are going to fit into a utility role much better than the primary roles that I've shown in these builds, such as bringing HE arrows as a grenade launcher replacement, or crossbows for dozer killing. Now all that said, and all the bow shilling aside, even I have to admit that at the core of it, bows kinda suck. Even the Plains Rider, as solid of a weapon as it is, can't really compare to most other weapons in the game that, you know, shoot bullets. While I don't want to delve too deep into this rabbit hole, in general I believe having drastically different levels of power for similar enough stuff is a good thing in this game. Weak weapons, weak perk decks, and even weak skills can help keep Payday 2's sandbox-esque gameplay fresh for even longer. That being said, I do believe a few bows could actually do with a few buffs. Since Death Sentence initially came out as one down, bows are one of the very few classes which have not actually seen any buffs, but not only that, they've only seen nerfs. Compare that to Assault Rifles being buffed a little bit over a year ago, Akimbo SMGs being buffed a bit before that, Snipers getting grays, the LMG buffs, and so much more, bows kind of struggle to keep up in the current game. At this point in Payday's life cycle, pre-nerf crossbows consistently one-shotting dozers doesn't even seem that valuable anymore. To give bows a little bit more incentive to use, I thought I'd come up with a few small tweaks to bring some of the bows back into the spotlight. Specifically the heavy crossbow and the higher damage manual bows. Considering these hold the bottom three positions for bows, and arguably weapons in the whole game, it makes sense to adjust them to be a little bit better. The real problem comes from their lack of multi-killing ability. There exist many weapons with similarly slow fire rates, however they all have some form of killing multiple cops at once, whether it be the Thanatos utilizing Graze, or the HRL-7 splash damage. Despite being substantially better than the bows, even the HRL-7 is considered to be an awful weapon and rarely sees any use. To make these bows more statistically relevant, you would need to give them the ability to either kill multiple enemies, somehow increase their rate of fire, or even just be able to fit into a utility role much better. If I were to personally buff them, I would start by allowing both classes of these bows to pierce through enemies to get multi-kills when they're at full charge. While this is nowhere near as powerful as explosives or greys, it would allow them to gain some killing advantage benefited by player positioning and map knowledge. By no means would I say that this makes them good primary weapons, but it would help to make them just do a little bit more in the killing department. While I do think that this would help, I also think that some additional buffs are warranted. Specifically in making the heavy crossbow fit its dozer utility role a little bit better, and increasing the average fire rate when it comes to the DECA in English. For the crossbow, simply reverting the damage nerf and giving it back 4,000 damage would be a huge help. At this point in the game's life cycle, I unironically think that you could let it one-shot even minigun dozers straight to the body with no skills, and it still wouldn't even be that powerful. However, it's nice that these bows are still a weapon class mostly untouched by modern balancing, and they should probably stay that way. Now as for the DECA and the English, I think we have to get a little bit more creative. More damage doesn't really do much if you want these bows to see any use as main weapons. Considering their main rival is the Plains Rider, it's a little bit hard for them to compete. For reference, the Plains Rider can shoot sufficiently charged arrows at roughly 2 arrows per second when you account for the reload. The deck on the other hand, despite having the faster fire rate of the two heavier bows, sits at a little bit below 3 times slower than the Plains Rider. If there were a way for the heavy bows to hold multiple arrows at a time, it could become somewhat of a reasonable side grade. For example, if they retain the same reload speed, but are able to fire three arrows before reloading, the Deco would only shoot around 40% slower than the Plains Rider, and the English would shoot around 50% slower. Combined with an ability to pierce through enemies, there becomes at least somewhat of a reason to bring these weapons. The only reason that I recommend buffing these at all comes down to bows being one of the most mechanically interesting weapon types in the whole game. Handling manual bow charging, differing arrow trajectories, and just the nature of a projectile-based weapon 
makes them feel like nothing else. And while attempting to master their playstyle is certainly an enjoyable challenge, the rewards for that challenge can be a bit lackluster at times. That said, I definitely recommend giving these weapons a try, especially if you're starting to feel like the constant power creep can get just a bit overwhelming at times.